Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I know it has been an exhaustive day, and from the agenda that I have had a look at, I mean, the subject has been um, assessed and uh, examined from various uh, interesting angles. I think it's very important for MIM, and I would like to thank them for inviting me, to put the VAT on the agenda. At the moment, within the EU, um, we hear about austerity measures, deficit, debt, fiscal unions, banking unions, but in actual fact, VAT is one of the most important revenue streams for any government and for, for, for any state. And therefore, the simplification and uh, even harmonization, I've heard about harmonization up to a certain extent and so far, as it doesn't impact on the take that uh, more than any other country makes, I think um, it's important. In actual fact, uh, in May of this year, the European Council adopted a number of measures that are aimed at making VAT a simpler, more efficient, neutral, robust, and fraud-proof system. And uh, I cannot not refer to a remark made by one of the previous speakers, um, the one before that, when he said that there is a tax leakage of approximately 500 million, where Malta is concerned, if I understood correctly, that is approximately 10% of our GDP. Therefore, I mean, it uh, underlines the importance of this effect of uh, having uh, VAT more efficient. It was encouraging to note that the Green Paper attracted more than 1,700 responses from business academics, citizens, tax authorities, and professional service providers. We now have a clear indication of how the Commission intends to reform the European VAT system in the next few years. The short-term proposals include an important move to taxing transactions using the destination principle in the country of consumption, a simplification of the rules, and a broadening of the tax base, of the tax base to boost revenue. These changes will have an impact on most businesses in Malta as we have a very open economy where we import practically everything that we consume and export most of what we produce. We are also becoming increasingly hooked to e-commerce where many Maltese are now buying certain goods and services from overseas suppliers through the internet. According to the European Commission's report, a future European, European VAT system will be based on the destination principle. This implies that all supplies are taxed for VAT according to the rules of the country where the supply to the final consumer occurs. Consequently, the, original, the origin principle, which is the underlying principle of the current EU VAT directive, would be completely abandoned. It is therefore important that the government undertakes a thorough and depth technical study on how this change will affect local businesses and also our public finances. If there are any negative aspects that will impact on local businesses as a result of these fundamental changes, it is important that the business community should be consulted to define ways on how these negative aspects can be managed. Hopefully, these changes will have a positive impact, but we will only know this when the whole issue is scrutinized by our VAT experts. The Commission's aim when recommending these changes to the Council is to simplify the VAT system, and one cannot but agree with, uh, with such an objective. And in order to reduce VAT compliance costs and administrative burdens for businesses, in particular for businesses working more than in one EU member state. The Commission also supports the timely implementation of the one-stop shop facility by 2015 for those dealing with VAT issues. It is therefore hope that the reshaped VAT system will result in a single set of more clear and, more and simpler VAT rules, the EU VAT code, and taxpayers will only have to deal with the tax authorities of a single member state. It is therefore important that national tax authorities will set up an intensified, automated and rapid exchange of information and ultimately collectively act as a European tax authority. The Commission should therefore heed the Council's recommendation to promote close cooperation with member states and in consultation with stakeholders continue to work on the setting up of a tripartite EU VAT forum informing the Commission, the member state and the stakeholders. In its May communication, the European Council emphasized that value of the tax constitutes a major source of revenue for national budgets and reform of the current 
EU VAT system should aim at making it more effective and efficient, removing unjustified exemptions, exemptions and broadening the tax base in order to contribute to fiscal consolidation and growth. I think this principle assumes particular importance even now um, in the light of what many countries are experiencing, the debt, the bailout, the deficit uh, targets that have to be that have to be reached. But at the same time, um, it is very important that this doesn't mean giving a free hand for prohibitive um, VAT rates or um, not giving the due exemptions where these are obviously applicable, especially after taking into account social considerations that are still um, applicable today, for example, like the exemption of VAT on, medic on medicine or food and so on. Um, we need to ask ourselves whether this may have a negative impact on our government's ability to calibrate VAT rates to support certain sectors of the economy at a particular point in time where such support could be crucial for the revival of the flagging, uh, of the flagging fortunes of such a sector. We do have, for example, a special rate for the tourism sector at 7% now. Therefore, I mean, these are also, these are also considerations that one has to take into account in the national interest. I believe that we should aim to have as much flexibility as possible in the way we set the VAT rates in order to support those sectors that need temporary fiscal support to survive and prosper. Finally, one would hope that the other proposals that ca came out of the Commission's debate on the future of VAT in the EU should be implemented with speed. These include the setting up of the EU VAT web portal that provides information in several languages on basic issue issues such as registration, invoicing, VAT returns, etc. Publishing by the end of this year the guidance agreed by the VAT Committee on EU legislation and explanatory notes on the new legislation before its entry into force in order to inform businesses. Proposing a standardized VAT declaration VAT return to be available in all languages for businesses across the EU by 2013. Ensuring the smooth introduction of the one-stop shop scheme registration as single EU member states in 2015, proposing a quick reaction mechanism as early as possible to deal with massive organized and sudden VAT fraud, establishing a more neutral and simpler VAT framework for passenger transport activities, and last and not least, proposing legislation to lay down the definitive regime text of intra-EU trade in 2014. One hopes that the reform and the modernization of the European VAT system that has existed since the late 1960s has now finally taken off and will gather speed. Having said this, we have to keep our feet on the ground as there is still a long way to go to see the proposed changes implemented. As we all know, the devil of successful implementation is in the detail and I think it's very important for us, the smallest member states within the EU, that not only in the VAT but also in all other directives, the banking, fiscal union, etc., whatever, uh, will be developing in the next months and years. It's very important that we take into account very much the particular situation um, of our of our country and the way our economy is evolving and how we will see it. It will evolve in uh, the next five to ten years. Thank you very much. I hope I didn't take much of your time and didn't tire you by my short exposition. Thank you very much. Thank you.